Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to compare for you the two databases that I like the most in the NoSQL space and that is DynamoDB and CosmosDB. One is native to AWS and the other one lives in Azure and they have many similarities but they also have many differences. I'm going to talk about the similarities in the beginning just to get an idea of what they are and what they do and what problem they're solving and then I'm going to talk about the things they do differently and the things you should be aware looking to dive into one of the two because one might do something that you might not be able to do in the other. So this is just for educational purposes. This is not an Azure versus AWS fight. I'm going to objectively talk about these technologies and at the end I might give you my take on them. But for the most part, these are just listing features and things that I've seen and what they do well and what they do not so well. So starting off, let's just list a few of the similarities. They are both NoSQL databases, fully managed and native to their cloud platforms. DynamoDB only lives in AWS and CosmosDB only lives in Azure. And they both use as the default API uh, communication with JSON. That's very specifically phrased because even though you get data back and forth with JSON, DynamoDB doesn't actually store them as JSON. It uses a different way to store them. And I think even Cosmos uses a different way to store them, but it's being interfaced to you as JSON. They both use a partitioning hashing mechanism to uh, scale out and this is a choice that is immutable for both of them and you have to make it when you create your container or your table. Each logical partition for both of them does have a 10 gigabyte maximum and this is probably for them to be able to keep their SLAs low and guarantee you know 5 millisecond reads and 10 millisecond writes or whatever they are on uh, nowadays. They both use a token sort of credit based mechanism to throttle your requests and if you exceed that you're going to get uh, too many request exceptions or a 429 exception and they do that because they charge you based on that and then you need to scale it up um, using that credit based uh, mechanism to actually pay for more and get more throughput out of it. The expensive part is usually that, not really the storage in these technologies. Both of them support auto scaling in one way or another and both of them can be globally replicated to allow for uh, multi-read or multi-master support in the respective scaled out nodes around the globe. Last but not least, and what I think is one of the most important features of the technology, they both support a streaming or notification mechanism out of actions in the documents that you're storing in them. For example, if something is created, you can act on that. If something is updated, you can act on that. Um, so this sort of mechanism is actually native to both of them and they can both trigger things like Azure Functions or lambdas. Now I'm going to leave the similarities there because even though you might say that there are more, I think they're minor and it's the differences that really make a difference. So I'm going to focus on them. DynamoDB only allows you to talk to it with a very specific format. This is a DynamoDB protocol, um, the way you deal with the data. Uh, there is no flexibility on that. However, Cosmos DB, at the beginning of the application, you get to choose where you want to use the core API or SQL API, uh, Gremlin, Cassandra, Table API. You have more choices in terms of how you want to talk to that database. And this makes migration easier because if you're already in Mongo, for example, and you want to migrate to Cosmos DB, you don't have to change your code to do that. You just migrate the data and the same code would run in Cosmos DB with the MongoDB option enabled or the MongoDB uh, API enabled. So this sort of flexibility is a big plus for Cosmos DB. DynamoDB, on the other hand, separates the token or the unit for writes and reads and this means that in Cosmos DB you have a request unit in DynamoDB you have a read unit and a write unit and you can scale them independently so if you're writing more but you're not really reading you can focus on scaling that but you don't have to touch to read now if you think about it it doesn't make much of a difference because in Cosmos DB they're being charged differently um, one write um, is, costs more than one read so you can do the math and have the same example the difference is that you can actually set auto scaling rules in DynamoDB independently on reads and writes with different utilization uh, thresholds as well which makes it more flexible so I think this is where DynamoDB actually has a better approach to deal with scaling or auto scaling your database even though they both support a partition key mechanism to allow for actually scaling out the data, Cosmos DB only gives you a partition key while DynamoDB gives you an optional sort key. Now, 
this is a great thing because all the things within that partition will actually be sorted but this is not the only way you can actually use that you can use it to create sort of an, a pseudo join mechanism depending on how you do your data modeling we might actually make a video on that because i think it's very interesting but it gives you more flexibility however you can technically use in cosmos db the id property that every document needs to have as a very similar mechanism without the sorting but the same pseudo join um, approach because the uniqueness in a document the thing that makes it unique in each of them is in dynamo it's the partition key and the sort key if present and in cosmos db it's the partition key and the id uh, which needs to be present so yeah in cosmos db the id is only unique within its own partition DynamoDB supports a couple of things, uh, the GSI and the LSI, Global Secondary Index and Local Secondary Index. I'm going to focus on the GSI because I think it's more important. In a sense, it effectively gives you the option to have a secondary or a second uh, partition key for your uh, table because effectively what it will do is it will replicate all the data in your document or if not replicating, that's basically what it's trying to achieve. And then you can treat that uh, global secondary index as a second partition key. So if you make a mistake in your data or if your data access uh, patterns change and you still want to query the same data but with a different partition key, you can use the GSI to get to that point. Now, I have mixed feelings about this because it's actually like a get out of jail free card if you mess up your data modeling, but products change and new requirements um, arise and you don't want to migrate all your data to accommodate this new access pattern. So I see where they're coming from and I do actually like the feature quite a bit. Now, like I said, both of these technologies support a streaming mechanism. In Dynamo, it's called a stream and in Cosmos DB, it's called the chains feed. Um, and they both give you consumers to actually consume that uh, feed manually or you can use an Azure function with a binding or a, a Lambda with an equal thing effectively a binding to consume that in a serverless fashion. The problem is that Dynamos, I think, has one feature more and one more significant feature less. The feature more that it has is that it will actually notify you on deleted documents as well. Uh, while Cosmos DB won't actually notify you on deleted documents yet. I know they're looking into it, but currently they're not actually notifying you. And the other thing that DynamoDB does more is that you can choose to have the old image, the old version of the document that's being manipulated as part of that notification. So you can do comparisons on those documents and make more flexible actions however the bad thing about it is that you cannot actually get notified on data before 24 hours which means you cannot actually replay the documents from before 24 hours when they happened while in cosmos db from the beginning of the database you can actually it, it gives you a separate um, set of documents that you can actually store checkpoints actually it stores checkpoints on in itself but you can tinker with that you can manipulate the checkpoints the start from dates you can do a lot of flexible things there to actually achieve full replaying of all the documents if you want to rehydrate some data or some cache or whatever so cosmos db uh, really has the more flexible when it comes to replayability but DynamoDB has the more feature rich approach on the processing level not really the infrastructure and replayability level now, something else that they are quite different with is their SDKs. I mean, DynamoDB's SDK is ba bad. It's like really bad. I Every time I have to use it, I feel really, really bad. It's because of the way AWS does things and what languages they prioritize and how they generate some of them dynamically. You get with these SDKs that the .NET engineer would not actually write, while the Cosmos DB one, after the version 2, which is was questionable, at best, and this is when I made my own SDK as well. Um, after that, they actually put a lot of effort in making a very great user experience for developers. And it's not amazing yet, but it's great. So I'm actually using the preview for right now, and I'm very happy with where it's going. I would change a few things, um, but for the most part, it's a significantly better SDK from what uh, AWS is giving you for DynamoDB. Cosmos DB also supports three more levels of consistency than DynamoDB. DynamoDB has eventual and strong writes and reads, but Cosmos DB actually gives you the option to have three more. Um, with I'm not going to dive into the very specifics because two of them I think are okay. I, you probably won't use them, but the one that you 
should probably use them is the default one, which is the session. Session means that I can read my writes in a strong consistency, but for everybody else, they are eventual, um, which means that if you have a traffic manager with sticky sessions or some sort of mechanism like that, and you write and you read on that table, you're most likely, or container, you're most likely to read, actually you're almost guaranteed to read strong uh, your uh, writes. Both Cosmos DB and DynamoDB support uh, optimistic concurrency in one way or another. Cosmos DB does it with an E tag, which is a value that changes every time a document is manipulated. It's a GUID effectively. But DynamoDB, I think, has the better approach where you can actually have your own expression based on the existing properties of the document. And for example, you can have a custom version or a date or whatever, and you can do um, equality comparison checks. And if they fail, then the document write fails. And I'm using that actually um, in production. And it's a way better approach than how Cosmos DB goes about it. And I really hope that Cosmos DB actually allows for that flexibility. One feature that Cosmos DB has over DynamoDB is that it actually supports stored procedures However, they're not how you know them from, um, you know, SQL Server or whatever. They're written in JavaScript and they are only transactional within their own uh, partition key, meaning you cannot just have a transaction for so many documents across your whole um, container or collection, the way Cosmos DB calls them. And the reason for that is because for them to support their SLAs, they have to set some boundaries is what you can and cannot do with uh, store procedures. Being on the topic of transactions, DynamoDB actually allows you to have transactions for up to 25 documents. And I think there's a size uh, limit as well, but the 25 documents is the hard limit. And it actually allows you to do that with individual expressions on the document level in the batch. Uh, if you want to have optimistic concurrency and also you can have it in multiple tables It doesn't have to be in the same table Which I think is an amazing way to implement this and I know that Cosmos DB added a similar uh, transaction mechanism with up to a hundred uh, documents within the same partition But I really want them to start looking into that thing where you can actually have multi-collection in some scenarios even though Oh, sorry, containers, even though I don't necessarily think you need so many containers and that feature is necessary, the cross partition transaction feature is very important for some people and it would actually make some things very, very easy or easier than they currently are. And the last feature, which is actually a new feature for Cosmos DB, is that it actually gives you an option to have a completely serverless container. And what that means is that you don't need to provision any RUs. Um, I think up to 5,000 will automatically work. And after that point, you know, you might actually want to go to a dedicated one. But if you don't have, if you don't need to have guarantees in terms of your throughput and you want to have like a one-off charging you basically nothing, um, to run Cosmos DB allows you to have this fully serverless container approach, which I am actually using to support the uh, Patreon mechanism that uh, authorizes users to get access to my GitHub repo to get the source. Really, really cool stuff. So which one do I prefer? Uh, might be the question you want to ask in the comments. I'm going to answer it now. Now, keep in mind that I've used both of them in high throughput scenarios, high scale scenarios in production with billions of documents. I've seen the good and I've seen the bad. And I can tell you that they're both very good technologies. Currently in a production capability, I'm using DynamoDB, not so much CosmosDB, but I'm using CosmosDB for my personal stuff. And I can tell you that still the change feed the, the ability to replay things and have this more event sourcing flexibility where you can build a state out of the events that you're storing into the database is a feature that I cannot live without and I kind of have to live without now working with Dynamo. I actually had to engineer a solution around it to build the equivalent thing in Dynamo because I needed it and I wish Dynamo did that because it does some things very well, uh, some things not so well. I think the Ultimate NoSQL managed database is somewhere in the middle where one learns from the other and whoever gets there first, they're gonna effectively be the best. Ultimately, you have to take this list, what I presented to you today, and make a decision for yourself. They will both scale indefinitely, assuming you do your data modeling correctly. And this is the thing you have to nail if you want to use them. If you go in a, 
in a you know RDBMS relational mindset in these technologies, you will 100% fail. And I do actually want to make um, a data modeling video talking about these two technologies. So if you want to see that, leave a comment in the description down below. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me on Patreon as well, you can find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.